Welcome to the Bio Balance Healthcast, episode number 336, Brain Drain. New research shows how your brain stays healthy. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Dr. Maupin and I spend a considerable amount of time reviewing uh, medical journals and magazines looking for articles or research data that we can bring to you uh, in our health cast topics. And one of the things that we ran across was uh, an article that was in the March edition of Scientific American entitled Brain Drain. And it was the, uh, reporting on uh, uh, some studies that had been done by a couple of doctors at uh, University of Copenhagen mm-hmm. in Sweden, uh, Dr. Malkin uh, Nedergaard and Dr. Stephen Goldman. And th- they were looking at the question of <clears throat> how the body cleanses toxic waste. Mm -hmm. And of course, doctors have known forever how the body cleanses toxic waste. But what they haven't known, and the question that came to these doctors for interesting research, they said that the brain uh, of the average adult human comprises about 2% of total body mass. But it consumes between 20 and 25% of all the energy that the body produces. Mm -hmm. So as it uses the energy that it consumes, it produces waste products, just like your body, when it consumes the energy that it consumes, generates toxic waste that the bloodstream has to pick up, the lymphatic system has to pick up, and eliminate it through your kidneys and your bowels. Mm-hmm. So the curiosity and your liver, and your liver. Mm-hmm. Uh, the curiosity then becomes: How does the brain? I mean, is that is the brain drain of whatever toxic waste are generated in the brain? Does that come out in the regular lymph system and bloodstream circulation? And how does it get out? And how does it get out? Where does it come out? Because there's... There's There's a there's a blood-brain barrier. So we all, as doctors know, that's kind of this kind of nebulous thing, but it's it it actually is a way of keeping the brain and the spinal fluid separate. Separate from the rest of the from body. From the rest of your body. So certain things can't get into your brain. Like infections. Like infections, viruses. like th- things that are bigger, like size matters in terms of getting through the blood-brain barrier. Ioniza- ionization, like the charge of something matters in getting through. So it only lets certain things through and keeps the bad stuff out. That's why you can have a kidney infection and not have meningitis. It keeps that infection from go- that goes through your body. Right. It doesn't go to your brain. So, right. so, so ha- if it if it can't get, you know, if we can't get in, yeah. with the normal bloodstream and lymph system, it's, it's, how it's does like it get one, out? One way membrane. Right. It filters all the bad stuff out and lets the good stuff go through, mm-hmm. but then it can't come back out. Right. So they're looking at the, their primary thing was so. So how does it get out? If right. it can't get it, things can't get in. How does it, how does the bad stuff get out? So that's what they they started looking for. So they started and that's looking they found. to see is there some physical mechanism in the brain that we haven't identified? I mean, they, people have cut open brains for centuries. Uh, even the cavemen used to do what they call trephining. They would mm-hmm. knock a hole in the brain, and <laughs> try to let the bad spirits out. Uh, so we know, or thought we know, the knew the physiology of the brain. But in and the their, anatomy. <laughs> and I mean, the anatomy is yeah. the physical, the physical structure of the brain. We mm-hmm. know that, but microscopically, yes, is what they were looking so at. So they're looking for some way that individual cells in the brain process energy mm-hmm. and get rid of waste product. Where does that go? If they shove it out, if you kick it out of one single little cell, and there are billions of cells in the brain, if you kick out the waste from one little cell, does it? Does it create a mass? Does it get sticky? Is that where plaque comes from? Is that goo that's in the brain that maybe then has uh, <clears throat> an impact on neurophysiological uh, issues like mm-hmm. Alzheimer's disease or Parkinson's disease? Is there a connection? Can we find it? Can we prove it? Can we? It would be helpful to know. And so in their research, they actually did find the mechanism. They found the pathway by mm-hmm. which the brain cleanses itself. 
and they created a name for it. They said they said it's very much the same way as the lymph system mm -hmm. uh, works in the rest of the body, and so they call it the glymphatic system. Mm -hmm. With the G. And uh, they say every individual brain cell is surrounded by peri and they have perivascular. So that means all the way around each capillary, there's like a donut shaped uh, structure sleeve or yeah, hole. Sl it's like a sl it's like insulation. Like it's almost yeah. like an insulation, like right. you would see on a wire. So it's the the covering around each capillary and each blood vessel that carries the junk out. So it's not in the blood of the brain, but in the lymph system of the brain, and carries it down to the area that's right around your pituitary. And then there's a cribriform plate that connects with the lymph system of the body, and it dumps it there. So that's the trash can. So do you, I mean, you, crib yeah, reform no, no, is like no, no. a little, it's like, a, it's like an outlet, like, right, it's like, like a, a right one way there. exit. Yeah. <laughs> like kind of like that. Yeah. Right. Right. right at the there. base of right your brain. Dead center part of the brain. Mm -hmm. uh, so that then you, you have the one way filter as the blood comes into the brain, bringing the energy that you mm -hmm. need with all these other toxins and waste products and infections and undesirable elements are kept out of the brain. Mm -hmm. Then the brain uses the energy that it needs and returns its toxic waste through this glymphatic system mm -hmm. to this gate, which mm -hmm. then releases it back into the regular lymph system mm -hmm. and drains out through your liver, your kidneys, your bowels. The lymph system actually, it's like very, like if you just do this, I'm actually doing like a lymph massage. It's its right underneath your skin. And it's constantly and it's it's working. Con it's working. It, it basically takes all the fluid that's from your tissues, dumps it into lymph nodes that are that are under your arms, you know, at all the creases kind mm -hmm. of in your, in your body, the lymph nodes filter it. Then that fluid then goes back to your bloodstream through a lymphatic channel that dumps into your vena cava, mm -hmm. into your heart. So, so it's, it's a very cool system. It picks up all the junk. Like we look at lymph nodes to mm -hmm. look for cancers. Well, the reason we do that is because the, your body's get, getting rid of these cancerous cells. And so in the meantime, it's putting it in the trash can, the trash cans, then dumping it into the trash bin under your arms or wherever it, with your lymph nodes, they get big filled with these cancerous cells. That's how we know it has gotten out of a single cancer somewhere else on your body. It's gone to the, lymph, gone nodes. To the lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a system to try to capture these bad things and hold them and then let the other stuff go by mm -hmm. and then try to attack them and kill them, kill those cells. But sometimes we can't. And then, then it becomes metastatic cancer. So this is, but it's a very cool system. You can't find it. Like if you do, if you cut through the skin, you can't like see these little lymph vessels. It's all microscopic. It's microscopic and they're flattened basically until they get some fluid. But a lymph massage is just this. I mean, it's just like barely touching your skin to get to move it. It's and, very cool. Yeah, it, it is fascinating. What an you amazing instrument we are. We don't tend to think of the body as a, as a mechanical process. But there but it is. are so many mechanical processes in the body. On every level. I mean, yeah. the, like the surgeons deal with large anatomy, and then you go all the way down to microscopic, and then there's sub-microscopic, sub -microsco and right. then enzymes. and I mean, all these things that we find. You'd think there'd be nothing more to find in the body, wouldn't you? But we found these. We found these little vascular, perivascular, um, I guess, sewers that basically are taking out everything from the brain. Yeah. Cleaning it. Un unless they're not working. Mm -hmm. And so as these doctors identified this system, then they also, in the process, were identifying people for whom the systems work well and for whom the systems did not work mm -hmm. well. And they began to say, well, why? What, what is the problem here? And the first thing that they noticed is that the major volume of this work product occurs when we're sleeping. And so it is important It's one of the explanations now that you can offer for why do we need to sleep mm -hmm. and why do we need to sleep so much? Mm -hmm. Because that is when our brain, our brains cleanse themselves of the sewage that we've Isn't generated. Is it 80% that the, of the brain, of the cleaning of, of your the brain, cleaning of your brain happens occurs when, you're, when you're asleep, which yes. is why people who don't sleep very much and don't need, say, I, I don't need sleep. I've heard the it's President not Trump necessarily. sleeps less than three hours a day. That's because you're a Democrat. I thought it was the a Republicans medical, think they, I it was that he sleeps eight hours a day. Statement. The Republicans think he sleeps eight hours a day, and I didn't vote for him, so 
It but doesn't it, matter. I didn't vote for anybody. So the I suggestion voted for would Johnson. be there could be a lot of crap in his brain. Yes. Huh. Okay. There could be. If, if it was, if it was, if know. that was accurate, but I, I, I hesitate to criticize anybody. Oh, me too. Before the first year, oh, I, I want to give him a chance. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Hopefully. You know. Uh, so I mean, I'm just, I'm just out there watching. So, um, so then they, they looked at the diseases like Parkinson's that have, that affects the brain where you lose part of your structures of your brain. Um, the substantia nigra, which are the cells in your brain that make dopamine, those are the cells that you lose in Parkinson's. But then you also get plaques with um, Alzheimer's disease. They get plaques that, that like block the ability of a nerve. Think of it like a wire. You put something on it to block that nerve impulse from going from one place to another. They wanted to know, is this because... We have a toxic level of toxins in our brain that can't get out. The sludge that can't get out. Right. And, and, and so they, they started looking at these serious diseases like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. But then they also wanted to just know as, as we age and our system slows down and we begin to have issues with memory, with, with word recall. You know, like I, I watched Jeopardy and I used to be able to go bang, 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 bang. Now I'm like, ah, ah, ah. And I know that I know, but I have to go find it and it takes a while and I have to look for where did I make file you sleep that. More. Yeah. And it may be because I'm not sleeping enough. You do sleep enough though, right? I, well, I hope so. Yeah. No, but, but, I, but, but this could be why, but the, the, our answer or one of our answers, there's lots of, there's lots of possible answers to this. But our answer is that 90% of our patients, once they get their testosterone back and they start, they usually start losing weight. They start, you know, they start, I guess, being good to themselves, but they, they sleep more. Right. They sleep solid. They sleep, they have dreams. They don't, I mean, they're not just having an irritable sleep, which is not good for you. I mean. Or a frequently interrupted one. Right. So, so they sleep through the night. So this is helping our brains who have testosterone added after our own has gone away. And this should help us sleep the rest of our lives, basically, as long as we take the testosterone. That's one of the things that's missing in aging. And one of the things that now I can connect with, why does sleep matter? Right. And why does testo testosterone to sleep to protecting against Alzheimer's or brain damage. Yeah. So the benefit of this research is certainly more than just, and I don't mean to diminish in any way, more than just a new tool to look at neurodegenerative disease process like Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or cancers, but to say that ordinary people with ordinary aging issues can benefit from what we learned from this mm -hmm. research, which is that there is, it is critically important to get an adequate amount of speech uh, of sleep mm -hmm. every day. You know what I I watch you have these. To clean your brain. I watch these kind of goofy British um, mystery things, Midsummer Murders, and yeah. then the yeah. the Poirot things, and you know all these people in that era, which was like in the 30s and 40s, and also in in the current era in England, have all these little powders they take to sleep. I mean, they're not like Ambien. They're like mixtures of natural stuff that makes them sleep. And they drink it before bed. I mean, I'm like, how? nobody sleeps in Britain except for the people taking these powders, it seems, that we're, we're watching. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just saying this is what these shows make me think. Right. That at least they understand that a natural mixture of herbs or whatever sleep, is what they necessary. Call sleeping powders. Right. And, sleeping and powders. They had them in the United States too. So. I didn't, I, I didn't know that. Yeah. I mean, my mother was an herbalist. We had nothing in our house. She I mean, made her own nothing. Stuff. Yeah, yeah. She made her own stuff. Made her own stuff. <laughs> Honey and vinegar. Yeah. Marijuana <laughs> grows naturally in the United States. Yes, it does. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't think it grew in my backyard though. No, I'm sure it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want, yeah, and I'm curious, is that a, psychosomatic product. I mean, just like meditation, relaxation behaviors, getting yourself ready to go to sleep at night, reviewing your day, calming down. The, when we do dream work uh, analysis. You mean everybody doesn't just go full court press and then pass and out then like off. I but, do? Yeah, no, <laughs> many people don't. And that's, and that's one not, of the reasons why they don't sleep well. No. And we therapists have worked with people on learning how to relax, regulate their breathing, clear their mm -hmm. brain, 
uh, think about things they want to maybe dream about that night before they go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Keep a notepad by the bed. You know, if you wake up, kind of just write it down up, and then you go to sleep. Area, write it down. I can never write read my down. writing. Well, most people can't. Uh, not read your writing. Most but I can never. Own when they, <laughs> no one when can they read my writing, but I mean, I can't yet. even read it. Uh, <laughs> but now, possibly, what we're learning is that there might be some medicines that truly do help that don't have side effects. Mm-hmm. But whatever methodology you find, if you can help yourself by getting regular sp- sleep at night, mm-hmm. then you can clean the toxic waste out of your body. Your mind will stay sharper, quicker. You'll have better memory. And hopefully, you'll avoid neurodegenerative diseases. And if you can't sleep still and you're over 40, then maybe we can give you testosterone pellets and that will help you sleep because it right. does help sleep. Right. So that and that in that way would help protect you from some of these diseases. Okay. So go to sleep. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.